it's really about the rebellion of the heart, isn't it? It's about much more than just love. Yeah, there's, there's, it, it, it's the most famous love story yeah. in history in, in some basic way. But one of the interesting facts about Romeo and Juliet is that it's almost never played as Shakespeare wrote it. And this, this, was, this seems to have been true almost from the very beginning. Um, it, generated, uh, it generated parody straight away, and, and there are various texts. Um, th there, are two, there, are, there are two different texts from Shakespeare's period which show the play very quickly being cut. And so for, example, Rome, for, for example, Juliet's, a lot of Juliet's speeches getting cut in the second half, and she's full of kind of sexual energy and uh, these wild punning and, and a, 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 a sort of fearless rebelliousness. And that gets cut in the very, you know, in 1597 um, and already. And throughout history, what's happened is that the, the, the play is, is edited, cut, to suit people's preconceptions about it, to make it more romantic, to make it more of a story about love. And this is still going on today. And so the, the, the famous and, and justly um, popular films of Romeo and Juliet, the Zeffirelli one from the 60s and then the Baz Luhrmann one from more recently, um, they, ha they basically did the same cuts as, w as, as were happening in the 18th century when people were shocked by the, by the, um, the violence of the play and by its, by its indecorum. And by indecorum I mean something which is far in excess of expectation, far, far more than um, the occasion would seem to ask for. And so, for example, you've got one, I've mentioned you know, Juliet's, Juliet's um, se sexual punning, but also there's a scene when Romeo going to the tomb um, later on where, where, Ju where Juliet um, buried herself. W there's a scene in which we see Paris, who's the other suitor for Juliet, um, thinking that Juliet's dead. He walks up there and, and offers, gives flowers and, and, and speaks this rather beautiful speech of, of praise and mourning for Juliet. And then um, it's, all, it's in, a, in, a, in, a, in a very lyrical mode. And then the next moment, Romeo comes up um, like a like this savage monster speaking a completely different kind of language, um, and brains Paris basically kills him with a, with a spade, um, and he's you know is, he's an absolute sort of act of brutality and savagery. There's no sense in which Paris is mocked by Shakespeare um, at all, um, but that scene is pretty much always cut. You don't get that scene because it's because it ruins the image of Romeo as the as the beautiful lover and turns him into a kind of monster. Um, he he talks about the great moor of death and so forth in entering that. Um, in the same way, I mean, Juliet is 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 a figure who I mean, I, I at the beginning of the book I talk about a particular moment when when Juliet goes to her parents, they're talking about, you know, the, the marriage to Paris, which they've arranged for, whenever it is. And she goes to her parents and says, yes, I'll, you know, I'll see you in the morning, I'll see you in the morning, good night, good night. And they, they give, they, they sort of bless her. Chilling, isn't it? Though? Yeah, and, and, she's, and, she, um, and, and she knows full well that she will never see them again. And, you know, we, we talk about the idea of Rome, Ju Juliet as, a, as, a, as some sort of model for, you know, adolescent high-spiritedness or, or acting upon your desires or something. But this goes far, far beyond anything that we can actually countenance. Um, yes, Kapila Khan says, I think she says something like it's about a pair of adolescents trying to grow up and escape their parents. Yeah, th and that, that, that seems to me to be far too bourgeois for this play and kind of patronising, really. Um, I mean, <laughs> nothing against Kapila Khan's got does some great work, but that particular judgment, I think that it's, it suggests that there's a, that, that there's a point um, that there's an ideal, there's a sort of moderate um, or livable ideal to which Romeo and Juliet are aiming, something like a happy marriage or a marriage free from the constraints of elders or free from uh, parental coercion, that, that idea. But that seems, and that's true in some sense. It's true that they want to be free from that kind of coercion. You know, they want to be free to choose whoever they want to love and that sort of stuff. But the what, what I always think about Shakespeare is the most, the most important stuff, the stuff which, which, is, which is where the real energy is, the stuff which seems either unnecessary or superfluous or somehow kind of beyond what you might think is reasonable. And that's where it's really the action. So, so what I look at, look at with Juliet is just the, the absolute excess of what she does. Not, not only having a sort of hissy fit and abusing her parents, but, but committing to this plot and then having the coldness of heart and, and, and of mind to, to go to them and execute that plot. 
I mean, the idea that anyone, any sort of, oh, I was going to say 17-year-old, but 13-year-old, um, saying that to, to their parents now, in, and not just saying, I'm going to run away now, but actually committing to it. It's, it's, a, it's far more than a commitment to love. It's a, it's a commitment to a kind of excessive uh, will. It's a, it's a desire which will annihilate community, which will um, be an end to family as it's, as it, as it's been known, um, which, yeah, destroys all relations with everyone she's ever known, apart from this one boy. Um, it's, it's, it's extraordinary. I mean, you described love as a, like a sort of mythic force in this yeah. play, isn't it? And in a, in a way with Shakespeare, it's not controlled. It's not something you choose, is it? Or certainly no. in Romeo and Juliet, this idea that his, his first, uh, Romeo's first choice, Rosalind, that was a choice. But with Juliet, it wasn't a choice. It's, it's, it was something which just happened, had to happen. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think that Shakespeare in most of his plays n never sees love as a, as a, as a choice, as some, something, which something which we, which we can decide upon. Yeah, you get taken by taken it. Taken by it. Um, it possesses yeah. you. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's got a kind of demonic, diabolical force very often, not always, but very often, certainly in, in this play. Um, I, I think that, but, but there's also ways in which it's, it's, not, it's, it's not only that, I mean, I think, he, I think Shakespeare's keyed into the notion of passion. He understands, this is I mean, another way of saying this is a, pa a play about rebellion, but it's, not, it's, not, it's also a play about passion. And, I, and, I, 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 and, and passion means suffering. That's what it means. It means to, to submit to things which are beyond your control. It's the opposite of action. Action means you will it, you decide something, and you act upon it. Passion means things come at you and you suffer them. And, that, and, and the, 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 the sort of the glory and, and, and the... the the, the danger of, of Romeo and Juliet is that these characters, it's, a, it's absolutely a suffering. There's no, there's no sense in which these, these characters think, think ahead to some kind of happy um, domestic survival. That, that's not what the play's about. The, the play's about committing to that, to that moment. And, it's, and it's, it's also keyed into the, to, to the, I mean, the, 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 the deep, the, the darkness of, of, of erotic desire is, is also everywhere in this play. And, and of course, but signalled early on by Mercutio. This other, I mean, if you talk about the excess, I mean, yeah. there's Mercutio, fantastically eloquent with the conjuring yeah. up this vision of Queen Mab, this fairy tale queen. But I think you say in the guide that he had to die, and he makes way for Juliet because he's almost like a rival of Juliet. So all yeah. that passion, negative passion, in ne ne negative passion, and, and and passion that can find no object with 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 uh, Mercutio, where, where he has this I extraordinary verbal quickness and wit and facility and nobody can understand what he says fundamentally. Ro Romeo in one brief scene is able to trade jokes with him but basically he's left behind. But also with Mercutio has this, this amazing velocity, amazing uh, um, fertility of imagination but with nothing to as it were appease it, nothing to take it, there's, there's, there's nothing there to, 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 to take that and, and to, 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 to bring it home anywhere. It also, it also that it, so you get you get this creativity and fertility without an object. You get creativity and fertility, which is also tied to some awful sense of um, you know. You, people are always speculating about Mercutio, and they try you know in the performance they try to, they try to make some sense of his of his violence of, uh, and and the fact that so many of his jokes are full of sexual disgust. Um, and so is he is he is he um, is he in love with Romeo? You know, is 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 his homoerotic um, humour? Well, maybe, but it's all you know. Th there's a kind of se se sexual loathing and disgust and so forth. And and the queen, the famous Queen Mab speech, um, is 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 partly about that. And it's, it's about these imagining this spirit of this spirit of that that enters people's dreams and and. Um, leads to fo forms of violent pregnancy and so forth. And I, what, what I suggest is that this speech is all of the energy of that speech, the, um, the, 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 the violence of that speech, but, all, but also, the, the, that, the, I mean, it's a very popular speech, isn't it? It's one of the things which is never cut from the play. No one, no, no, no one knows what it means particularly, but they, they can feel the, the, the sort of self-delighting abundance of the speech, the sense that this is, there's a huge life force. The Queen there. Mab speech. Yes, the, the fairy, Queen Mab the speech. Fairy tale. Exactly, the, the fairy, fairy queen. The, the, yes, yeah. the fairy queen. This, this enormous fertility which, which has no end point, has no object. And I think 
basically Juliet. It's it's kind of I, th- I see it as sort of giving birth to. to because it ends on a very cynical note. I yeah. Mean, a very and so in a way, yeah. I suppose he's the opposite of Juliet. Is is, is 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 that the vision that he conjures up is the opposite in a sense? I think he's I think he's uh, the the opposite in that there's no future for Mercutio other but but also and, and Juliet is all about futures you might say but equally she's he's he has to die but so too does Juliet have to die there's no possibility that Juliet's going to escape death ever um and that her she commit as I said already she she her commitment to desire is absolutely a commitment to desire beyond all possibility of living you know um the 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 first thing that's said of her is um my child is her father says my child is yet a stranger to the earth um uh, you know, and, and he talks about how all his other children are in the earth mm. and she's my only child of the earth. And, and so she's somehow arriving out of the grave, you know, and she's, con- she's going to re- return to that. And she, she, you know, she heads into the tomb. And, and the, 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 so, 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 so to the extent that, that Mercutio's v- sort of vision is, is one of um, terrible forms of kind of this, he reduces the world to these atomies and, 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 the, and the whole thing is is um, a, a, an, ex, an, an explosion which doesn't seem to have any, yeah, it doesn't seem to have any object other than uh, unrequitable desire or something, something like that. Um, J- Juliet repairs that. Juliet sort of, ha- J- Juliet has the, um, I mean, Mikusha never knows that Juliet exists. It's quite important. Of course he doesn't. I mean, she's a figure of promise. I mean, you get the, 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 the play, the, the play sets it up. It, I mean, it's a very interesting beginning to the play where e- everything is sort of disappointing and inadequate in this world, everything, until, and, and even the lovers, ev- even, even the lovers are, disappoint, are disappointed uh, it, when we first meet them. We, you know, we, we, Romeo's not at the thing, not, not at the brawl at the start with all those stupid idiots fighting. And then he's, he's, he's alone in a forest, we don't see him. And then Juliet is, is invoked first by her father, and we don't see her. Then when we first meet her, um, she's surrounded, crowded out by the nurse and her mother, kind of refusing to let her speak. Yeah. Um, and so we know that Romeo and Juliet are going to be the heart of the play, and yet we don't actually get to really hear them. Um, Romeo talks um, s- sort of cliches to his mate Benvolio. They don't really, as it were, arrive, they don't really come true until that, that moment when they see each other. And then instantly they come to, to full life. And that's so, so. There's some sense in, in which that this is magical and predestined, but it's predestined also by our desires. That, that's what we've been waiting for. And so, the, so you know, there's a. So to, to the extent there's hope, it's 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 our hope as much as their hope. I mean, it's not it's not that we we don't see Juliet sitting around. We don't Shakespeare doesn't give her soliloquies or something where she says, "Oh God, I'm bored," or I, "I really wish my true love would turn up." There's nothing like that at all. It's it's it just it happens with with with, with extraordinary suddenness.